Hey guys, it's Hannah and welcome back to the Dyslexic Reader. Today I am going to be doing my May wrap up. I was going to start this video by saying I haven't posted a lot of videos in May. I've had a lot going on with work and stuff in my personal life as well. But I actually did read a lot of books in May. So let's just get stuck right into it. bar one or two of my books this month have been library books and I wasn't as organised as last month to record my wrap up before sending them back to the library so I'm going to try to insert photos of the covers beside me uh, while I talk about them. My The first book that I read was The Wordsmith by Patricia Ford. I gave this five stars and I have a full review of this on my channel so I'll leave that link down below but it's really a sort of dystopian novel set in the future where the ice caps have melted global warming and has risen so the only ground left is high ground which is sort of split off into islands then and the people who sort of run this community are the people who were sort of green warriors as they called themselves and had prepared for this but a way of controlling the populace is they take away language and words and literature and it's how that affects the society. Um, this would be a YA book but I would say you could give it from anyone from sort of 12, 13 up reading ability wise and there's nothing in it that would be inappropriate and it's perfectly fine as an adult read as well. The second book I read was The Nowhere Emporium by Ross Mackenzie. This book I gave four stars. I was sort of hesitant to give it a five and I don't really know why. Um, it's about an orphan boy, a magical shop, mystery. It was an original storyline as well but there was something about the writing style for me that really held me back from giving it five stars. But I did really enjoy this book and as I said I found the storyline incredibly original. So if you like sort of Victorian era and um, middle grade books that surround sort of mystery or like magic or like shops or circuses that sort of type of thing I think you'll definitely enjoy this. The third book I read was 13 Minutes by Sarah Pinsberg. I gave this five stars as well. I got so many five stars this month. Um, uh, this was purely a cover pickup for me. I saw it in the library and it intrigued me and as soon as I read the back I knew I had to read it. It's about a girl who um, is found dead in a river and she's clinically dead for 13 minutes and they manage to revive her but she's got amnesia of the whole event. She doesn't know if she fell or was she pushed so there's a whole investigation which follows this. I think that it was a really re well written book. There was so many twists and turns it was incredible. It wasn't messy but you could never see what was coming next. It really kept me like literally on the edge of my seat and sitting up for to all hours trying to read more. If you like sort of contemporary mysteries where uh, it's really incorporated into like today's life, the way that social media is used in this, they show screenshots of text, but it reads really well. I would definitely recommend this to anyone who's looking for a book that fulfills any of the sort of things that I was talking about. My fourth book of the month was Liesl and Poe by Lauren Oliver. I also have a full review of this on my channel. I think it will be probably my favourite book of the year or it will definitely be up there. I could not recommend this book enough. It is about a young girl whose father is dead and she sort of sets out on this adventure to return his ashes but there's magic involved and sort of misplaced objects and she meets a alchemist apprentice called Will and they go on this journey together. It's one of those stories that 
there's loads of stories happening and they all sort of cross over and just miss each other and it all comes together at the end and it is absolutely beautifully written and has a beautiful message. Then I read The Fantastic Mr Fox by Roald Dahl. I gave this three stars. It is probably the third Roald Dahl book I've read in the last year or so. I never really read him as a child and now I'm understanding why. The more I read his work I find it just meh. Um, I'm middle of the road about it. Um, I think some of the stories have some interesting and unique ideas put into them. I don't like his writing style. I find some of his work sexist. Um, to be quite frank, and I know you've got to take into the time and stuff with that. But no, I'm not a big Roald Dahl fan and I definitely won't be rushing to pick up any more. The next book was one I listened to on audiobooks. I normally only get through one audiobook a month, but I listen to them in the car when I'm going to and from work. And uh, the one that I had this month was The Extraordinary Adventures of Alfred Crump by Rick Yanksley and I gave this four stars. What intrigued me about this was it incorporated Excalibur into the storyline and I love anything that includes sort of King Arthur's stories and legends but in a contemporary setting. So if you have any recommendations for those sorts of books um, I really love anything that's sort of King Arthur in modern day. This was a story about a young boy whose um, parents have died and he's passed around from relative and relative. He ends up living with his uncle who is asked to steal a valuable sword which turns out to be a scalibur. And it sort of then sets off this whole journey from him, finding out about the people who protect the scalibur and the people who are trying to take it and for what reasons and finding out more about himself. I gave this four stars. The only reason it missed out on a five for me was I thought there was some parts that were action sort of scenes that really could have been edited out of the book. They didn't really add to the storyline. The next book I read was The Timekeeper by Tara Sims. This was one that I have been wanting to read for ages and for me it was a major letdown. There was only a few redeeming things that kept me from giving it a two star. I actually ended up with a three which is just middle of the road. Don't like, don't dislike. Um, I thought the storyline was so promising. It was so unique. It was about people who worked in sort of an alternative Victorian world where time was actually controlled by clocks and each town had a clock tower and when something went wrong with this something went wrong with time. It would go slow or fast or stop completely and completely isolate a town and it was about the mechanics who had to fix it. There were certain people who could feel the time and had a connection with that. It was a special ability who then went on to be mechanics and look after the clocks, which I thought was a really great idea. Again, I thought there was part of this that was slow, but my the biggest thing I felt was about a third of it could have been edited out. It was far too long. It took me ages to get through and I felt like a lot of the story didn't have any impact in the main storyline. There was a romance element which I was unaware of um, going into it and I probably wouldn't have picked it up if I knew it was so romance heavy. I would say even more than the whole time thing, romance is the main plotline and as not a fan of romance this sort of put me off reading it which made it even longer which put me off reading it. Um, so it didn't really work for me, although I thought it was a really interesting comment uh, concept. And if you do not mind romance in books, then you probably would like this. I finally got round to reading Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. Uh, this was another five star for me. And it was a book that I've been wanting to read for a long time. And I finally got round to it. It's a dystopian world and it's called Fahrenheit 451 because that's the temperature at work, the, the heat at which books will just, or paper, will just start to burn, even if it hasn't been set on fire. And in this dystopian society, books are banned and there is a group of firemen who its job is to re be reported to about who has books and they go and burn down these people's houses. 
and uh, the main message is sort of not only about how important literature is but how important interpretation of literature is and really sort of media and I guess it could be applied to social media which obviously wasn't around in the 50s when this was written but how that can really influence how we look at literature. My next book was another middle grade book. It was There May Be a Castle by Piers Torday. I gave this five stars. It was very emotive book. It's about a family who on their way to their grandparents for Christmas Eve crash and the young boy, the main character, Mouse, has an extreme imagination and as he goes to seek help for his family, um, sort of his, the trauma kicks in in his brain and as he's actually wandering looking for help for his unconscious family in the car he's dreaming up all this imaginary thing that happens but along the way his sister does wake up and eventually tries to set out to find him so you get the real life perspective from what she's saying and then you get his imaginary perspective from him uh, this book is beautifully written the symbolism in it is impeccable and I think a child of any age would understand and the way it copes with grief in a family is really quite beautiful and this book had me crying which I have not done at a book for months. I also read Blue Lily, Lily Blue by Maggie Stiefeter. I always get her name confused in my head and it never comes out the same way twice. Uh, I give this five stars. It's the third installment of The Raven Cycle. I've just started the fourth book today actually as I'm filming this. Um, I have really really enjoyed this series. I have given it all five stars. The overarching storyline is a group of young people who are searching for a Welsh king who is apparently buried or left sleeping underground somewhere in America and they're looking for his body because the people who wake him up are said to receive a favour from him but there's a lot more to it than that there's um, psychics and everything included and normally that sort of storyline wouldn't intrigue me but this series is written flawlessly um, I like all my loose ends tied up and this definitely does it things that are said in the first book that you think have no meaning come across like by the third book have a massive meaning like everything has a symbolism everything that is said or done is done for a reason and affects the storyline and it is written absolutely seamlessly and flawlessly in my opinion. Then I read Wild Boar and The Black Terror this book was by Rob Lloyd Jones and I gave it four stars. I thought the mystery in this book was good it's about Wild Boy and his friend Carissa. This is the second book, which I didn't know, but it's one of these children's mystery books. I don't think you would have to have read the first one. They were both, in the previous book, rescued from a circus by the by ways of helping to catch a killer that they were framed for doing this killing and they didn't. And then the second book follows them when they take on someone who is poisoning the town of London. This is Victorian era and um, the poison is causing people to have such extreme hallucinations of terror that they eventually die from the strain on their heart and their brain. I did enjoy the mystery of this. I thought the concept was good. The only reason I didn't give it five stars was I did not like the character of Wild Boy. Wild Boy was his freak show name and they continued all his friends, well he only had a couple of friends, but all his friends and the people he continued to um, know and like and live with still called him Wild Boy. He was never given a name, he was never given proper clothes and certainly from the way the book says that he was treated as a child, um, he was abandoned at a workhouse and locked up because people were disgusted by him and then he was sold to a circus where he was locked in a cage and literally just thrown food. He was kicked and beaten. He wouldn't be able to walk, he wouldn't be a functioning citizen, he wouldn't have any sort of social skills, he wouldn't be able to speak. Um, so I had a problem with Wild Boar, Boy as a character but definitely the storyline was quite intriguing and the mystery did keep me reading. I also this month, I almost forgot, read Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. 
uh, this was a great book about um, people with mental illness, how society views them, how they're taken care of, friendship and love and loss and mistake and human life in general. <coughs> I find this book emotive and incredibly moving and it's a short read. It's only about a hundred pages long and I think it's something that people should really read. It's one that I've been wanting to read for a long time because I know sort of the impact it had and I really enjoy it. Which I just tried to get finished this morning so that I could film this video and have it up for the end of May was Missing Arabella by Catherine Stable. I gave this five stars. This was sort of written in the style of a fairy tale um, but it wasn't like a retelling. It was a fairy tale kind of story but in a modern setting. It wasn't um, I couldn't see where it was based off other fairy tales but it definitely had a fairy tale feel. It is about two sisters that are split up, uh, twin sisters who have a deep connection and try to find each other again. I think that this book would work extremely well as a movie. It's also told by a mother to a little girl and you get in it like her telling the story plus the things the little the conversations that the little girl and the mother has you know at certain parts in the story about what words mean and things like that and that actually ties into the story at the end who the little girl and the mother are which I wasn't expecting and it was done really well and this was Catherine Stable's debut novel and I think it was incredibly well written and I can't wait to see if she brings out anything else. So I read 13 books this month and I had seven five stars which is more than half the books I read. I had a really great reading May. It started off kind of slumpy about a first week in but it really picked up. I'm hoping I'll have just a successful uh, reading June. Let me know if you have any recommendations for King Arthur folklore in modern day or what you've been reading in May or if you've read any of these books. I hope you're all happy, I hope you're all healthy and I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye.